Have you ever noticed that the colors in various TF2 maps don't match? If I burn this heavy on 2 fort, he looks like this. But when I burn him on junction, he looks like this. And putting the two side by side, there's clearly a difference. I first noticed this a long time ago and didn't know if it was just me or something wrong with the map. But now that I know how to analyze maps using the hammer editor, I finally have an answer. And it turns out that the difference, which may seem subtle at first, is actually huge. Let's begin by talking about color. In TF2, color is determined by a few different things, the most obvious of which being the material itself. Take this white wall for example. It's white because that's the color of the actual texture file. If we add a red light, it mixes with the white and gives us pink. And let's say we wanted this wall to be completely pink without swapping out the material. Well, we could cover it in red lights and it'd look like this, but that doesn't look good and it causes issues when trying to compile the map. So what we can do instead of spamming a bunch of lights is use a light environment entity. All we have to do is set the ambient color to red, compile the map, and now this wall looks pink without any weird splotches. You can also set the entity's brightness to pink for an even stronger effect. Now this is where most mappers stop, but this is also where they fall short. The things I just described only affect the colors of the map, not the colors of the particles, textures, and glow effects. What does this mean? Well, take this sticky bomb for example. When blasted by light environment, you can still see its bright blue texture and glow, although the shadows do have a hint of purple due to the model's self-shadowing. But if you want to change the color of the actual sticky bomb, light environment can't do that for you. This is where we can use an entity called color correction. Unlike the light environment entity, whose parameters are configured within the hammer editor, color correction is actually set up in-game. All we have to do is load it to a map that already has the entity in it. Unfortunately, most maps don't have this, so what I'm about to show will not work on maps like Dust Bowl, Upward, and Badwater, but it will work on 2Fort, because 2Fort is one of the few maps that actually uses color correction. All you have to do is enable SV Cheats and type Color Correction UI in the console. Now we have two boxes on our screen. The one in the top left is a visual representation of our color correction settings. The box in the bottom right is how we adjust the settings. When I take this enable box, you might notice my screen change color slightly, and that's because when I enable this tool, all of the existing color correction is overridden. Since I haven't done anything yet, what we currently see when I enable the tools is 2Fort without any color correction. So as it turns out, 2Fort is actually brighter than normal. But we want to create our own color correction. So we have to select new at the bottom, which opens up this box with five operations. Curves, levels, selected HSV, lookup, and color balance. Let's start with levels. So we'll select that and hit create. Now we have a new pop-up window from the bottom right corner of our screen with a few different arrows. This histogram represents the distribution of brightness you could call it in our scene. This large peak on the right means that a lot of this scene is on the brighter end. However, there is a sizable gap on the right. This means that none of our scene contains any colors at maximum brightness. You might think that this is a good thing since you don't want a map that's too bright, but what this actually means is that our brightest colors really aren't as bright as they can be without all turning pure white. So in this scenario, the best thing to do is drag this arrow on the right a bit to the left until it meets our graph. This brightens the scene while preventing any of the textures from turning pure white. We can do the same thing on the other end of the graph with the blacks, and it works the same way. The arrow in the middle will shift the histogram to the left or to the right and can be used to recenter the histogram which could be helpful if it's skewed heavily towards one side, or you want a scene that's brighter or darker than normal. Lastly, we have these two output level arrows. All they do is determine how strong the most dark or bright areas can be. If I drag the left arrow to the right, that forces the darkest areas to become brighter, while dragging the right arrow to the left does the opposite. Now everything I've described has just been about changing the brightness of certain areas. If you want to play around with the colors, all you have to do is change the channel from RGB to red, green, or blue, and everything I've just explained will apply to these two. When used properly, you can use levels to transform 2Fort from this into this. Again, before, and after. So now that we've gone through levels, let's move on to curves. Unlike the histogram in levels, curves uses a line that affects our shadows, midtones, and highlights. 
The part of the graph closest to the origin affects the shadows, and the part in the top right corner affects highlights. We can place points along the line and move them around to precise positions which creates curves that affect the brightness. For example, creating and raising a point in the top right section of our line brightens the sky in clouds, whereas creating and lowering a point in the bottom left section of our line decreases the brightness of just our shadows. This is doing the same thing as levels, but given the fact that you can place as many points as you want, theoretically, you can make even more precise adjustments overall and with the individual colors. However, without a graph that shows the brightness distribution of the colors, which we do see in Photoshop but not in TF2, I don't find curves to be very intuitive. So unless you go off of the same perspective in Photoshop as reference, or really know what you're doing, I'd recommend sticking with levels to keep things as simple as possible while maintaining a good amount of control. So now that we've gone over the two main color correction tools, let's move on to what I'd consider to be the more gimmicky ones, starting with color balance. Now the reason why I call this effect gimmicky is because the curves and levels tool can do the same thing plus more. Say I wanted to create that same hot and dusty effect from earlier. I can increase the reds and yellows across the shadows, midtones, and highlights, but I'm working with scales instead of curves or a graph, and I don't have the ability to modify the brightness of one of the areas for a specific color, at least not easily since we only have three options and this slider. But, if you want to make your map lean more towards a specific color, it's quick and easy to do. And speaking of quick and easy, the selected HSV tool is the quickest and easiest of the four. All you have to do is turn on Select All, and you can change the hue, saturation, and value of your scene. The hue slider merges all of the colors in your scene towards one. The saturation controls how concentrated or washed out they look, and the value sets the overall brightness. Now, if you're trying to achieve a more professional color correction, this tool isn't going to give you what you want. So unless you're just playing around, just use levels or curves, and maybe color balance. The last operation is called Lookup Tool, which I think is supposed to allow you to preview saved color correction files, which are stored in the format .raw, but it doesn't seem to do anything, at least from what I tried. But, you can take a .raw file and reference it in your color correction entity before compiling the map to see how it looks. So from what we've seen in this video, color correction is an incredibly powerful tool that can be utilized in many different TF2 maps but currently isn't. And yes, there are obvious problems with color correcting maps, the most obvious being that no two parts look the same, so one color correction setting for the whole map isn't going to be perfect. However, you can make a more conservative adjustment that still improves the overall look, just like Valve did with 2 Fort, though even there I feel like they could have done more. There is a way to circumvent this problem, but I'll leave that for another video. In the meantime, have some fun with this tool. Thank you for watching. This is LED switching off.